Hey, Dad! We've got a package here! They're asking for your signature! As a delivery worker, I found it endearing to watch a child leading their father back to the front door at a delivery location. Could you please sign here? I offered the father a smile and handed over the document for him to sign. However, the sight of me turned him stark white and he became completely still. My name is Holly. I'm 30 years old and work as a delivery driver for a shipping company. I was born into a fairly affluent family thanks to my father's prosperous business. But rather than follow in my family's footsteps, I chose to branch out and find work elsewhere. While out on deliveries, I happened to cross paths with Darren, a man a couple of years my senior, working at one of my regular stops. He courted me, and before long, we were wed. Today, we are parents to a beautiful son, and we lead a blissful life together. My parents never pushed me to step into the family business. But before our wedding, my father questioned Darren. Are you considering taking over our family enterprise? Darren's response was a firm, Absolutely. As a result, Darren quit his job before we got married and shifted to my family's company to train and eventually take over. Darren had always been a soft-spoken, serene man, but I noticed a change in him after we married. He started belittling my job and vented out his anger towards my father, his current employer, on me. Believing in the good-hearted man he was before we tied the knot, I hoped he would regain his former self once things at work stabilized, hence I decided to give him some breathing room. My father had informed me that Darren was having a hard time improving his performance in his role as the external sales rep. I thought that might be adding to his stress. But instead of improving, his behavior only escalated for the worse. Chores that we should have been dividing between us were slowly piling up on me, with him excusing himself saying he was exhausted from work, and he gradually withdrew from helping raise our child. Feeling partly responsible for asking him to switch to my family's business, I found it hard to confront his worsening attitude. In the end, I found myself frantically juggling housekeeping, childcare, and my work duties. Eventually, my personal grooming as a woman took a back seat. Seeing this, he would mockingly comment on my looks, saying, Hey, it seems like ever since you became a mom, you've stopped putting as much time into your appearance, like not bothering with your hair and skipping makeup. What's up with that? He also began comparing me to a female colleague, saying, At work, there's a woman your age who's raising two kids, and she puts on makeup and keeps her appearance neat every day. I wish you could take a leaf out of her book. Isn't that woman you're talking about, Nicole, in the administrative department? She lives with her husband's parents at their home, right? And both of her children are in elementary school. She wasn't working when her kids were little. The clerk, Nicole, that Darren mentioned, had left the company when her kids were born. But guess what? She's back now, thanks to her in-law stepping in to help with taking care of the kids. But when I told this fact to Darren, he deflected the conversation saying, My parents live far away, and if we were to live with your parents, I'd have to see my boss all the time, wouldn't I? Living together with your parents is impossible. On his days off, he would frequently leave the house saying, I'm going to a business seminar. I was the only one managing all the household chores and taking care of our son. It was really exhausting. Between juggling work and childcare during the week, and then trying to tackle the mounting housework on my days off, I was just getting more and more drained, both physically and mentally. I could have reached out to my parents for some help. But I was worried that I might somehow put Darren in a difficult spot at his work, so I found it hard to ask for that extra support. But there's only so much a person can take. 
Amidst such days, I eventually collapsed from all the stress and overwork. It happened at my workplace, and when they couldn't reach Darren, who was my emergency contact, they reached out to my mother, who rushed over. Are you so swamped with work that you're actually passing out from exhaustion? Does Darren even realize you're working to the point of collapsing? I think he does, but he's also pulling long hours trying to secure his position in the company, so I can't really ask for his help. You could have told me! I worried that if Dad found about all of this, it could somehow impact Darren's position at the company. After taking some time to consider my words, my mom finally spoke up. From now on, talk to me before things get this bad. The following day, I got a message from my father. We need to have a talk. Come home without letting Darren know. When I returned home in response to his message, my father told me, Frankly, Darren isn't improving in his role at all. At this rate, it's not just about being ready to take over. He can't even handle his current responsibilities. We can't trust him with the company if this continues. And he's been attending external seminars, learning things that don't align with our company's ways. Whatever the reason, he isn't following the advice given by our staff. If there's no improvement, we can't keep accommodating him. We could introduce him to other companies if he's not willing to make changes. It might be better for him to find a place that suits his style. He said, leaving me in deep thought. I decided to have a serious talk with Darren. That night, I brought up the topic with him. Did you know that I passed out yesterday? The doctor said it was due to overwork. I can't handle all the housework, childcare, and my job alone anymore. So I need you to help around the house and with raising our child. But I'm already stretched thin trying to secure my position in your parents' company. I'm already at my limit. The moment he heard my story, Darren retorted in an angry tone. The kind Darren I used to know seemed to have vanished completely. Dad told me that your performance isn't improving and you keep butting heads with the company's methods instead of following them. He said there's no way you can be his successor at this rate. Maybe you should focus more on understanding our company before attending all those business seminars. If you can't do that, he suggests that you might be better off leaving the company and we'll do our best to help you find a job that fits you. So, what's your plan? I was hesitant to mention all this, but given his refusal to listen, I finally brought up the company issue. As soon as I mentioned the company, Darren seemed lost for words. Then he glared at me. Are you trying to control me by bringing up my work? Is this some kind of threat? That's not what I meant. So all my efforts so far have been for nothing, haven't they? I would have been much better off staying at my previous company. But in reality, you're not improving at all, despite receiving a high salary, right? I thought he would explode at my words, but surprisingly, he became quiet. I've been trying to figure things out, but it's not going well. Starting tomorrow, I'll change my approach, pay more attention to your dad's advice, and strive to improve. I'm sorry. Even though his sudden change in attitude felt strange, all I could reply was, Whether that's true or not, is for my father to decide. I hope you can earn his approval. After that, Darren started to chip in a bit with the housework, and I began to leave our son with my mother, which greatly eased my burden. But one day, when I visited my parents' house to leave my son, I happened to run into Ellen, who works at my father's company. It seems she had come to pick up some documents my father had forgotten. I encountered her just a few feet away from my parents' house. Seeing me, she made a slightly awkward expression. We made a small talk for a while, but then she said, 
I'm sorry, but I thought you should know. This might not be my place, but there's something I need to tell you. Actually, I moved recently and saw Darren coming out of a woman's house in the neighborhood. When I mentioned it to my husband, he said that Darren might be her boyfriend as he often visits during the day. I was speechless at this revelation from the company employee. Continuing on, she said, But that woman has a child. My husband said that the child calls Darren daddy. But it doesn't seem like they're living together, so my husband thought it was a complicated family situation. I was stunned by what I heard. I somehow managed to drop off my son with my mother and get through my work day, but honestly, I couldn't focus on anything and ended up leaving early. I decided to talk to my mother about it. After hearing my story, my mother was furious, but she said, It could be a misunderstanding. You should hire a private investigator to look into it thoroughly. I can provide the money if necessary. Let's not involve your father in this. Using my own savings, I hired a private investigator. The results came back quickly. Darren was in a relationship with a barmaid named Vicky, and they even had a five-year-old daughter together. The investigation also revealed why his sales performance wasn't improving. Apparently, under the guise of outside sales, he was visiting Vicky's house and spending time with his other family. Swallowing back tears, I decided to take action. Armed with the evidence from the investigator, I hired a lawyer who specialized in divorce cases and started making arrangements for a divorce. With the documents prepared by the lawyer, I decided to deliver Darren's belongings when he was visiting Vicky's house. When I rang the doorbell at her house, a little girl who was probably their daughter came out. My heart sank seeing this innocent child, but I calmly said, I have a delivery. I need a signature. Could you please call your mom or dad? At this, the girl shouted, Hey dad, we've got a package here. They're asking for your signature. And went back inside, dragging Darren out by the hand. Seeing me at the entrance, he went pale, stammering. W why? Just need a signature right here. I said, flashing my most charming grin before handing over the divorce papers and his belongings. It, it's a misunderstanding. He tried to argue, but just then, Vicky, suspicious about his delay, poked her head out from the living room. Oh, and this must be Vicky? I asked Darren. Who's this lady? Do you know her? She made a puzzled face and asked. Nice to meet you. I'm Holly, Darren's wife. Excuse the uniform. I'm on the clock. I'll be claiming damages from you too, so please go through these documents. I said and handed her the documents for claiming damages. To the still petrified Darren, I said, It's time we finalize this divorce. You need to acknowledge your daughter too. Oh, and Nicole. I'll also be claiming damages from her. I have found out from the investigator that he was also fooling around with Nicole, his company's clerk. Nicole's married too, huh? Her husband should hear about this, and my dad will definitely hear all about it. At this point, Darren looked like he was about to faint. The one who stopped him was Vicky. What's going on? I know you had a wife, but you have another mistress? She shouted and began to confront Darren. The sudden argument, or maybe just the tension, set Vicky's daughter off crying. I decided to leave them to it and head at home. I filled my parents in on the situation and moved me and my son's things to their place. Later, I met with my lawyer, filed for divorce from Darren, and sought alimony, child support, and damages from both Vicky and Nicole. Nicole's husband reached out to me. 
We agreed to share the cost of the investigation, and I handed over the evidence to him. Apparently, Darren had been spending his weekdays at Vicky's and claiming he was at business seminars on the weekends while actually spending time with Nicole. Turns out, he didn't follow the company's guidance simply because he was easily swayed by a young internet entrepreneur. And surprisingly, in the midst of this chaos, it was revealed that Vicky was also involved with another married man, which just made things even more complicated. But I chose to focus only on getting what was due to me. In the end, I was granted the alimony and child support I sought, and the divorce was finalized without any hassle. Darren seemed to have started a new life with Vicky and their daughter. My dad was ready to sack Darren, but I convinced him otherwise. Eventually, due to their misconduct at work, Darren and Nicole received pay cuts and demotions. I wanted him to stick around because I figured the others at work who knew about his affair and subsequent divorce wouldn't exactly be friendly towards him. I thought it would be better for him to suffer in a hostile workplace. I was right, and Darren, now just a regular employee with a significantly reduced income, couldn't stand the hostile environment and quit a few months later. According to Ellen, who lives near Vicky, the sound of Darren and Vicky's daily arguments can be heard all over the neighborhood. Although Darren and Vicky were living together, it was clear that their relationship was extremely sour. Then I got a message from Darren pleading for a reconciliation. I've realized how important you are to me, Holly. Ever since then, Vicky has been blaming me for being broke and she's raising that I should pay the damages claimed by the other man's wife. You are all I have, Holly. Help me. Let's start over. What are you talking about? To begin with, if Vicky's daughter is five years old, that means she was born two years into our marriage. There's no way I can forgive a man who's been lying to me for over five years. We're never getting back together again. I said bluntly and hung up the phone. I blocked his number after that. In the end, Darren and Vicky's arguments only intensified, leading to a noise complaint from the neighbors and their daughter being taken in by Vicky's parents. Darren found another job, but it paid much less, and with damage claims coming from all directions, he couldn't afford the rent and had to move. I don't know whether they broke up or are still together after that. I apologized to my parents saying, I'm so sorry for bringing such a person into the family and causing trouble for the company. But my father said, Honestly, I was already done with him before you even talked to me. I only tolerated him because he was your husband. I think my leniency might have ultimately hurt you. I should be the one apologizing. I thanked Ellen, who initially tipped me off about Darren's visits to Vicky's. I was worried that I might negatively impact your marriage, so I didn't say anything. But I'm glad things have worked out in a way you can accept. After that, I started working full-time instead of part-time, and I'm living a new life with my son. Of course, the alimony and child support payments, which were supposed to be made in installments, were already behind schedule. So after discussing with my lawyer, we're considering taking Darren and Nicole to court. The whole ordeal was a tough battle, but thanks to my parents' unwavering support, things seemed to be going smoothly. The damages I claimed from Vicky were paid for by her parents, so I guess we'll contact Darren and Nicole's parents to see if they can pay for them as well. While it doesn't seem like everything will be resolved soon, I hope to tie up the loose ends quickly for the sake of my son and me. I felt guilty for taking my son's father away from him, but my parents shower my son with love, and my mom comforted me by saying, Do you think your son would want a father like Darren? In other words, it's better not to have such a father at all. You just need to love him twice as much. 
Thanks to her, I was able to let go of that guilt. For the sake of my supportive parents, and most importantly for my son, I want to give my best in my future life. <laughs>